you could ever want to make him do right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And let's have a look at what's coming up on today's show. In Food Fingertips, we'll show you how to make chucky ice cream without the use of a freezer. Treat yourself to a wardrobe full of celebrities with Techno Fingertips famous face coat hangers. And grab your water bottles for a great make that'll improve your soccer skills. For all the details on the makes, you can replay this programme whenever you feel like it. Look at our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. We're stalking animals, so we have to be very quiet. But Stephen, oh, see any animals with your true lap like that? Good heavens! Chilepicus giganti! Where? 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 And, and look! Look! Flamingus phenomenal! Where? Oh! Oh! I can see it! I can see it! I can see it! Fern? That's a tree. But he's a mistake. These are fantastic. They are the coolest and tallest animals in town. They're the fingertips animals with altitude. Now you can buy animals like this from the shops and they cost an absolute fortune. But if you make them the fingertips way, they'll cost you next to nothing. And the great thing is you get to eat lots of biscuits in the process because the main body is made from a biscuit tube. And we're going to start off by making the giraffe, yeah? Yes, OK, so you need to take this and uh, I'll just take this. Right, so take your empty biscuit tube and make four holes. Now these are for your giraffe's legs. And you want to be very careful when you're doing this because, of course, the holes are for your giraffe's body and not yours. And now it's time to make the giraffe's head. So first, get a yoghurt pot and trim off all the edge around here and then place it onto a piece of card and draw around the base of it, like that, right the way around. And then, on top of this shape, you want to draw some knobbly giraffe horns, like that, and some nice giraffe ears, one either side. Then cut out this shape and stick it onto your yoghurt pot and you have a nice little giraffe head. And now it's time to make the giraffe's neck and you do this by getting a kitchen roll tube and just making some little slits around the top and the bottom. And these will really help you to stick your head to your neck because you can just fan out all this edging around here and this will stick on nicely there. And if you're going to use sticky tape, it's a good idea to use some paper mache on top after just to smoothen it over and it's easier to paint on as well. And then it's time to attach the head and the neck to the body. So how are you doing, Stephen? Doing okay, just making sure that the bamboo canes actually fit inside the holes that I made. And we're ready to now stick on the head fern. Yep. So these you fans will come in handy again. You can just Ooh. stick those on like that. A few pieces of tape either side That's should keep it in place. Now here's a fingertips top tip and you may have just noticed that it started to wobble. You shouldn't paint it at a high altitude. So take all the legs out so it doesn't wobble around. There we go. And you want to paint the legs and the head separately. And how cool does he look when he's all painted up? And it's really easy to get this giraffe effect. You just paint him yellow and then put on some nice big brown spots with a black outline. Then for the giraffe's feet, get a ball of modelling clay and just push the leg straight into there so he can stand up. And then add some card around the outside to neaten off the hoof. And for your giraffe's face, you could buy some googly eyes and stick them on. Or you could just as easily paint them on. And here's a final added touch. A bit of knotted string connected to the biscuit tube lid. And that will be his tail. Just pop it in place. And you now have one fingertips animal with altitude giraffe. And you could try making the phenomenal flamingo. Or how about the high horse. And the cool thing is you can store secret things in their bottoms. So make whatever you like as long as it is an animal with altitude. A minute. Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends you'd probably find from around your house. You'll be pleased to hear today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes, that's all I need. Just that. Yes. Well, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet. See if you can guess along the way. Steve, are you ready? That was very subtle, wasn't it, Fern? <laughs> OK, here we go. That was a bit of a clue there, by the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> three, two, one, go! Right, what I need to do, first of all, is very carefully just... Uh, That's three seconds gone, Steve. here, that's no problem. Key, cut him round. 
Okay, how am I doing? Well, that's 10 seconds. I'll speed up a little bit because you've okay. still got quite a lot to cut there. Oh, got to do this there. I don't want too many jaggedy corners. Right, how am I doing? That's now coming up for 20 seconds gone. Whoa! Right, okay. <laughs> don't know why I made that noise, but there we are. Keep going round. How Getting less now? and less like a circle, isn't it, Steve? There. <laughs> Any ideas what this is? That's a big question. Do you know? I'll tell you what, the, I don't think you're going to work it out, by the way, but uh, you'll like this. Okay, how much Stephen, that's now over 30 seconds. We're heading for oh. 40 seconds, Mr. Oh. Mulhern. 40 <laughs> seconds. Okay, keep going round. You're not even in the centre yet. Okay. This is quite scary. How am I doing? 10 when I'm 45, on 45, you have 15 left. Okay. Now we're approaching 10. I'm up. And in 10. Okay. 9. <laughs> 8. 7. <laughs> 6. 5. 4. Good time. Three, two, Stop the one. Clock. Stop it. One second left. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Tell yes. them what it is, go on. It's a dancing cobra, but how do you make it dance? I'll show you, watch. Rub it under your head to get a bit of static. That's it. And <laughs> what you do is you just put it near your stick. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> Whoa! Look at him dancing. <laughs> that is brilliant. And it's a good idea to decorate them too, but only use felt tip pens, otherwise they'll be too heavy and they won't jump and dance. And here's a fingertips top tip for you. If you decorate them first and then cut them out, it's a lot less fiddly. And you could even make a boogieing boa. <laughs> Let's have a look. And oh. he's off. There he goes. <laughs> hey, he's boogieing. So why don't you give it a go and see if you can beat the cock and make it in under a minute. Homemade ice cream. No E numbers, no preservatives, no additives. No way. Way? Well, we can't make any ice cream because we haven't got an ice cream maker. Don't need one. But we haven't got a freezer. Uh, don't need one of them either. Really? Really, because this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And trust me when I say, this really is fun to make. You see, we're going to make ice cream the old-fashioned way before the days of freezers. Now, in the old days, they used to buy a big block of ice the size of a small iceberg. And they used to chip away until they got loads of ice cubes. But we haven't got time for that. So here's a bowl that we prepared earlier. You'll also need two tablespoons of double cream. In that goes. You'll need four tablespoons of milk and two tablespoons of sweetened chocolate powder, like the type you use to make up chocolatey drinks. Now give it a good stir, like that, make sure it's all mixed together. And then bury your glass in your bowl of ice. Okay, here we go. In it goes. Right, now, while Fern is doing that, let me tell you about the secret ingredient, which is salt. Now, it's not for the mixture, don't worry about that. It's actually for the ice around the glass. Now, listen to this. Can you hear the crackling? Sounds good, doesn't it? Such a lovely <laughs> sound, yeah. Now, make sure you don't get any of your salt and ice mixture into your ice cream, otherwise it's going to taste pretty gross. Then, if you just pass with that tea towel, you need to put a clean, damp tea towel over the top of your mixture and leave it to freeze for a couple of hours. Now, you may be thinking, why do we need the salt? Well, the thing is, the salt makes the ice melt, and the ice melting is what freezes the mixture inside the glass. Then, after about an hour, you want to give it a stir, otherwise only the outsides will freeze. And you can do this from time to time, but always make sure that you cover it again with your tea towel. And after about another hour, fingers crossed, you should have some delicious fingertips homemade ice cream. Look, look at it's that. frozen out. Oh, we've got to try some, Steve. Come on. Right, come on. Let's in. dig in. This looks very nice. Tell me, is it nice? Mm, is it nice? Delicious. Ah, oh, mm. superb. So there you have it. Fingertips homemade ice cream made completely without using the freezer. You can make it anywhere, even in your bedroom. Give it a go. Let's have a taste. Stephen, where'd you get the ice from? Mm. The freezer. Coat hangers. Plastic, metal, boring. Here are fingertips. We think your favourite outfits deserve something better. So, hang on to these. And ditch the rest. Anyway, if you think your T-shirt looks good on you... Imagine how good it would look on a star. <laughs> I did say star. Or you could put your kit on a football player. 
Mmm, very tasty. Leave it. Uh, uh. <laughs> and then once you've found your supermodel, you need to get a picture of their face the size of A4. Now, you may be lucky enough to find the person you want to use in one of your favourite magazines. But if you cannot, do not worry, because this is Techno Fingertips, the part of the programme where we put technology to creative use. Now, if you can get access to a computer, then you can use this to resize any photo. Just scan your photo in and print it out. Then you need to bend your coat hanger. So get the first one and give it a good bend like this. And you may need to bend it a little bit more than you think, just so it stays in position. And then the other coat hanger will slot nicely on top of there. Look at that. Perfect. Sorted. Then get your picture of your star and stick it on a large piece of cardboard. And what you want to do is very carefully just cut round your star's head and then give him or her nice big American footballer shoulder pads and make them nice and pointy too. And then you want to take this bit away when you've cut it out. There we go. Get rid of that. Turn this over and position your coat hanger. Then, with lots of sticky tape, trust me, you're going to need loads, you want to stick it in place. So, just whack loads of it on here. Lots on the sides and the top bit needs quite a lot of sticky tape as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Up here. And then, to neaten the whole thing off, just get a pencil and score down both sides of your coat hanger. And what this will do is make it a lot easier to fold this part over. Then stick that down too. There we go. A bit more sticky tape. That should be enough. And you now have one fingertip famous coat hanger like that. How gorgeous. It'll make your t-shirts happy. So give your clothes the star treatment and make a whole wardrobe full of fingertips famous face coat hangers. You know how much we love football here at Fingertips. This really is the number one place to be for top football makes. Do you remember Fingertips tabletop football? <laughs> and beach football, that was another winner. Now, the big match of the day is this. Fingertips, bottle of soccer. But why bottle of soccer? Because it's almost entirely made from these plastic bottles. And it's the perfect training ground for your free kick technique. Here we go, Fern, you Stevie. ready? Oh! oh! And even better for your goalies to practice trying to save those goals. Now, trust us when we say that bottle of soccer is a fun game to play. And the players are made from these great shaped bottles. Now, they've got a loop at the top, which is perfect for swinging. But don't worry if you can't get hold of any of these, because actually, any shaped bottle will do, as long as they're all the same size. And what you do is you just loop a bit of thin card over the top, and that will swing in the exact same way. Now, the setup is this. You need to fill two bottles with sand to weight them down, and have an empty one in the middle. Now, this one is going to be your free kick specialist. Get yourself a bit of garden cane and just slide it through the loops just there and you can secure it in place with a bit of sticky tack either end there and there and you can paint over this a bit later on now while Stephen is dealing with the attackers I'm gonna get on with the defensive wall you need to stick together four small plastic bottles and then paint them a nice bright orange and we've cut out some yellow bibs and stuck those onto the front and on the back we put some numbers so it looks very realistic. That is going to be one hard wall to get round. Oh yeah. Yeah, now you want your board to go up a free kick ramp and for this just make a wedge out of green card and to make it look more realistic just add blades of grass just like that. Then get your fingertips on another water bottle and this will become your goalie. Remove the loop from the top because that's not needed and with a sharp pencil push a hole from the back to the front of your water bottle and then just get a bit of gardening cane and push it right the way through. And of course your goalie needs a goal to guard so get a fruit box, you can get these from most large supermarkets and cut a slit right across the back at the right height for your gardening cane to sit into and make it long enough so your goalie can save all of those goals. Now the little bit of fingertips know-how and paint your a bottle of soccer can easily become this. Yep, fully painted and decorated. And how about this? You could give your players a cool fingertips home strip. And for footballs, use ping pong balls and they fit snugly into the bottle lid. How about that for a snug fit? 
And we've given our goal a realistic net effect by drawing on these black lines. And check out goalie. He's already to save some goals in those goalkeeping gloves. Yeah. So, if you fancy making your own fingertips bottle of soccer, then check out the fingertips website. We'll give you the address at the end of today's show. Uh, just click on fun and all of the information you need will be there. And if you've got a pen and paper handy right now, you can jot down some top tips as we go over it again. Get hold of three plastic bottles and fill two with sand. Stand one empty bottle between the two sand filled ones and slide a garden cane through all the hoops. Attach them in place. Make your defensive wall with four small drinks bottles and paint them orange and add bibs and numbers. Make the free kick ramp with a wedge of card trimmed with grass. Make a hole in the back of another bottle and fix it to a garden cane to make your goalie. Use a fruit box as a goal and cut a slot in the back for your goalie to move along. Then paint and decorate your game. Right, I'm going to try a couple of banana shots around your defensive wall, Fern. Try it then, Stevie, go on. All you do is pull the player back and let it swing. Here we go. Oh, oh yes! What a goal. <laughs> so, practice your soccer skills and improve your free kicks with a fingertips bottle of soccer. Right, Stevie, top scorer coming through. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then check out our website. The address is on the screen now. And we'll see you very soon for some more... Fingertips! Fingertips. See ya! Bye! Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Hello and welcome to the DVD that has everything you've ever wanted to make and do right at your fingertips. Select one of the options on the screen and let's make and do.